Are you ready to take a trip around one of the most beautiful islands in North America? Mount Desert Island is world famous and for a good reason. I'm taking Jose to some of the best spots and we're taking you along with us. In the meantime, we still have a tight schedule to reach Alaska this summer and our schoolie bus is not playing nice. So I just spotted uh, two new leaks. It just sucks because we just took the bus to a mechanic shop for a full inspection. Time is running out and we're wondering if any of our plans will work out. Welcome to Mount Desert Island, the largest island off the coast of Maine. It is home to many small towns, including Bar Harbor, where my alma mater, College of the Atlantic, is located. Mount Desert Island is especially famous for being home to Acadia National Park, which covers nearly half of the 108-square-mile island. Acadia National Park has a rich history and stunning natural beauty. That's why over 3.5 million people visit Acadia National Park each year. I can't wait to show you this place, so let's go. We're starting in Bar Harbor, considered the gateway to Acadia National Park. It was my home for four years, and I've been waiting six years to share this place with Jose Luis. This town blows up in the summertime, but it's still early in the spring, so you can see everyone is still preparing for the tourist season. All shops. All shops. This is the bookstore where you get all your books as a college student. It's a very cute town. So I was thinking we could go park at the back. It looks like we'll have to go park. Bar Harbor is located on Frenchman Bay. Many of those boats that you see are lobster boats. Lobster fishing is a huge part of the industry here. Alongside lobster fishing, tourism is the beating heart of Bar Harbor's economy. In fact, tourism is what sustained me when I lived here. Everything is lobster here. Yeah. That's the theme. I worked my summers here at this jewelry shop now sold and my old bosses are enjoying a much deserved retirement. So I used to live in that building up there. I kind of lived there. Like my friend let me sleep on her couch. I believe there was like just a couple months that I needed to stay somewhere before I then went to Yucatan or went on a traveling trip or something like that. It's a beautiful building. It's right on the main street. Bar Harbor was founded in 1796, originally named Eden. Its early industries were fishing, lumber, shipbuilding, and agriculture. By the late 1880s, Mount Desert Island became established as a playground for the East Coast elite and super wealthy. And Bar Harbor was one of the villages that built up around lavish hotels and summer homes. It's not hard to understand why. The wealthy built their summer homes here, right on the waters of Frenchman Bay, looking out across this view. This shore path, in fact, is over a hundred years old. Those routes lead to the Bar Harbor of today, which is much more accessible to everyday people. Every summer, the town swells with visitors, here to experience a little taste of Maine. The rocky shore, the salt air, the quaint shop-lined streets, the almost obligatory lobster dinner, and, of course, the wildlife. Throughout the summer and fall months, many tours leave from the harbor to go out and see whales, puffins, seals, and not wildlife, but still amazingly beautiful, all the lighthouses. It really is a beautiful corner of the world. And now to enter Acadia National Park. 
We're going to drive the Park Loop Road, which is an awesome way to see some of the most beautiful spots in the park. That's a nice little van, Volkswagen Westphalia. This is beautiful. Too bad it's too cold to go swimming. There are only three sandy beaches on the island, and obviously Sand Beach is one of them. Everywhere else, the coast is that rugged and rocky coastline that has come to characterize me. It's so beautiful and different. Uh, what I like about it is that it looks like a beach that could be anywhere, but you have pine trees all around it. Mm. That makes it very different to what I've seen before. It's true. And in that sense, it makes it unique for me. This is so beautiful. Look at that. And we're lucky we had a beautiful day. Remember in the last episode when I said the waters here are fed by the Labrador current coming down from the Arctic? Yeah, the water here is cold. But that doesn't stop people from getting close enough to get absolutely soaked here at Thunder Hole. It's worth it. This little inlet eroded in just the right way that when waves hit, air trapped in front of the wave escapes in a thunderous boom and the spray can reach up to 40 feet high. It's quite an experience. Not a lot of rock can take a constant pounding like this without quickly eroding into the sea. But granite can. More on that in a bit. So now we're on Otter Cliffs. We just visited Thunder Hole and Sand Beach. Oh, it's really cool how the waves like... <laughs> <laughs> so cool. Really. Uh, and and it's aptly named. Yeah, and today is not even a windy day. Uh, so there's very few waves. But imagine on a windy day with like, you get maybe six feet or 10, 10 feet waves. Yeah. It must be an amazing sound. Like, yeah. It must splash all over the place. We have to be careful here because you could actually die. Gotta watch where we're going. Well, we don't want to do that, do we? No, I don't feel like dying today. They, they can be really slick sometimes. Not this one, though. Just be careful. I remember when climbing up here, there are sections that are like super slippery and you'll just swoop. Don't. I mean, boy. Do you see down there the little things in the water? All those markers? Yeah, all those little markers. Do you know what those are for? Lobsters. Lobster traps. Yep. It is really cool to come here with Jose because it's kind of like things come full circle and I feel like in the, the trip so far, I feel like I've been able to kind of close the loop on a lot of significant places for me. I think that's interesting that that just occurred to me sitting here looking out across the Atlantic. Really interesting. Now, I have just got to share some of the geology of Mount Desert Island with you. It's fascinating. 
The granites that make up this rocky shore started forming around 420 million years ago. They started as underground magma chambers within the belly of a volcano. Yes, that's right, a volcano. About 440 million years ago, MDI was once on the outer edge of a fragment of crust sandwiched between the ancient core of North America and another small crust fragment coming up behind. Of course, when pieces of crust collide like this, volcanoes tend to form, just as they did here. Only these eruptions were so violent, they formed a caldera about a quarter of the size of Yellowstone. And below it, of course, those magma chambers intruded into the overlying bedrock. When all that volcanic activity eventually died out, the magma chambers were left to slowly cool into granite. But they were still about two miles down underneath all that overlying bedrock. It wasn't until the Appalachian Mountains formed between 300 and 250 million years ago that this region was uplifted and all that overlying bedrock began to erode away. Fast forward a couple more million years, and glaciers did the rest of the job, scouring away the remaining overlying bedrock and then smoothing this landscape into the soft, dome-shaped mountains and rocky coast that we see today. So, when you are here on Mount Desert Island, driving the Park Loop Road around Acadia National Park, just think, you are actually driving along two miles down inside the magma-filled belly of a volcano. If you find this as bloody fascinating as I do and want to learn more, check out the Guide to the Geology of Mount Desert Island and Acadia National Park by Duane and Ruth Braun. We link to it in the description below. Something really cool about the island here, about the park, is that it has all these like carriage trails that are snaking throughout the entire park. And they were built by like the wealthy of Boston and New York, like the Rockefellers and the Astors. Like this was like the playground for a lot of the most wealthy. They would have like their summer homes here and everything. So this whole network of carriage trails was built through the park and it's really beautiful because now they're still here you can bike them in the summertime in the winter you can cross-country ski on them and wherever they cover a river or a gulch or anything like that they have built these beautiful granite bridges stretching over them so it's just like really really beautiful part of the park excited about it. Mm, look at all this amazing food we just got. Got a burger, lamb chowder, and fish and chips. <laughs> that is really amazing. The cream, mm. big burger. Mm. It's a blueberry cheesecake, right? Buenos dias. Good morning. It's 4 a.m. And we are making coffee to go drive up Cadillac Mountain and see the first sunrise in the United States. Coffee is necessary, of course. So I just made it. It's nice and hot. That's yours, love. Thank you. Bamanoshki. We are here 
we made it. I just finally woke up. I was so sleepy, but I'm glad that we made it. Rising 1,527 feet above sea level, Cadillac Mountain is the highest point on the eastern seaboard. And yes, it is the first place the sun rises in the continental U.S. However, what I didn't know was that you only see the first sunrise here from October 7th to March 6th. We were there in May. But still, it was amazing. Hey there. Hi. It's chilly, no? It's just a little. Grr. It's very cold. Now sit back and watch this incredible sunrise with us, looking out across Frenchman Bay and into the cold Atlantic waters of the Gulf of Maine. The sun is here! <laughs> it's so cold! Do you believe me now that Maine is cold? cold. Right, we saw the sunrise. We froze our butts off. I didn't come prepare. Look at Cora. <laughs> she looks like an Eskimo. <laughs> and I'm still cold. I'm always cold though. Oh, it's so beautiful, but so freaking cold. <sighs> <laughs> so I feel like that should be the, the National Park uh, poster for Maine or for Acadia National Park. So beautiful, but so cold. And we are in the second week of May already. Yeah. And it's still so cold. Yeah. We're gonna go to the car, warm up for a little bit, and then we're gonna go check out the other side of the the view. And then maybe come back and take a couple more pictures. This is the way to do it. From the car. With the heat blasting. There's no open oh, they're right there. We're just gonna warm up for a little bit. And get back out. Yeah. <laughs> you look so cute in the hand. <laughs> now that we are warm enough, we're gonna go and check out the other side of the, the view up here. So much better when you're a little warmer. From up here, you can really get a sense of the vast and rugged nature of the Maine coast. Dotted with innumerable islands, some populated, some not, Maine is a wild, tough, and absolutely stunning part of the world. It was a beautiful morning, wasn't it? It was. It froze our butts up, but... Wakes you up, at least. Yeah. It was yeah. really nice. I'm glad we did it. Yeah. And the drive down here, it's so gorgeous. This island. We would love to spend the rest of the day continuing to explore Mount Desert Island. Unfortunately, we have to turn Sancho towards town and get back to the bus. It's pretty cool driving through town so early in the morning, though. It is eerily quiet. It feels like the calm before the storm. And by the storm, I mean the tourist season that is about to start in a few short weeks. We only have a couple days to explore Mount Desert Island because we have to be in Montreal, Canada in just a few short days days. And there's a big thing weighing on our minds. That unresolved issue with the bus shutting itself off. In fact, just the other day, it did it again. Watch this. Uh-oh. 
I know what that means. I know exactly what that means. She just shut herself off again. So yeah, we have to get this figured out ASAP. Well, we are on our way out of COA. We're just filling up the water and then we are parking the bus, filling up the water and all of a sudden there's a puddle forming underneath the engine. Three days ago, we got a full oil change and like, like a big deal check over. Now it's doing this again. Bobby just like, man, doesn't give us a break. It just sucks because we just took the bus to to a mechanic shop for a full inspection, an oil change, and for two days we've been checking the additional lake and this morning, sure enough. So this one right here uh, is coming straight from this hose, so it looks like this hose is leaking from here. Yeah, and it just comes from here to over here, and that seems like that's part of the power steering. But then there's another one here. That's coming from right over here. I'm not sure what's the name of that part. It looks like it's coming from that bolt right there. It looks like it's their simple things. We're on our way to Canada and we have to be there in four days and we're having a hard time finding a mechanic. I can't even touch it today. There's no way. Hi there. Um, I have a DT466E 2001 in a school bus. Wondering if you guys have any time today or tomorrow for us to, to bring it over and at the very least, to, to hook it up to the computer and run the codes? It would probably be Wednesday or Thursday where I could do anything. I'm absolutely swamped. All right. Is I'm, it going to be going by here today or tomorrow? I mean, we're we're on our way to you guys right now, actually. Hey, I'll have somebody plug in the check engine light. We'll get somebody to read the code. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. You got it. Okay. Yeah, bye. No problem. We've been researching a lot about the light that is coming on on the bus and we found a few possible reasons and one of them is it could be the cool and low level oil or overheating but none of those is our problem we just did an oil change and the mechanics checked absolutely everything they said that everything is in excellent condition but unfortunately the next day the freaking light came on i didn't feel any loss of power or anything like that uh, but the bus stopped in the middle of an intersection and Put it on neutral, turn it back on, and it started right away. And I was able to drive more than 200 miles like that and no issues whatsoever. So I know that it's not coolant, it's not the oil. It's gotta be something electrical. So right now I'm gonna go and check the relays because that could be one of the issues. Maybe one of the relays uh, had a short and one of them might be a little, a little burned. So we're gonna go and check it out right now. If this turned out to be the problem, we're gonna be really lucky because these things are cheap. And a Napa nearby has them. This one looks great. I don't see any any issues with it. Let's see how the number two doing. I'm gonna just gonna take it first. It's gonna be easier for me. Just a little more dirty. Looks like kind of oily, but it's good. It's not burnt. The relays and all the connections that I checked, they all seem to be fine. But I reconnect them and make sure they're really tight. Let's see. Still there. Let's see what happens when we turn it on. All right, the problem's still there. The light's still there. We're gonna have to check other things. But tomorrow we're taking the bus to a mechanic. So we'll see tomorrow. So we decided to spend the last uh, few hours that we have here in Bar Harbor to see a little bit more of the national park for us taking me on another little tour. Yeah, so we're actually gonna do much more than the park. So we did a lot more of like park time yesterday, right? Um, we're gonna repeat the loop road, and then we're gonna go over to Southwest Harbor where I used to play music, and then we're gonna go all the way over to Bass Harbor, which is way on the other side, and just kind of like the very, very local side. And then we'll drive back to our Bobby bus and we'll take off back to the shop. <laughs> I think she likes hanging out with mechanics. I think that's why she just keeps popping little things off here and there because she just likes to hang out with the boys or something. I don't know. That's the, that's the thing with bus life. 
predictable van life is uh, pretty much unpredictable. You make your plans and then your vehicle decides to change the plans for you. And all you can do is be flexible and readjust the plans. Otherwise, you'll be frustrated all the time. Bobby Buzz has been a pain in the butt. So many breakdowns, I'm getting tired of it. So hopefully this, uh, these things are minor. We have to be in Montreal on Thursday and today is Monday. Hopefully there, there won't be any hiccups at the border. So for now, let's forget about that and let's just uh, enjoy this little tour of Bar Harbor and the National Park here. Yesterday we came as tourists, now today we're coming as artists. Jose is getting a lot of footage and photographs, and I'm capturing audio from my growing archive of soundscapes. What will this all be used for? Well, not only for the final Art We There at documentary film, but also the short experimental films that we feel so drawn to create together. We are in Southwest Harbor. This is Southwest Harbor. I imagine in the summer all the sailboats in there. It's gonna be really pretty. Mm -hmm. Light. Very, very pretty. Bass Harbor Light was constructed in 1855 to the tune of $5,000. It is still in commission today and you cannot go inside. Why? Well, lighthouses need keepers, and this one is no different. This lighthouse is a private residence for a local member of the Coast Guard and their family. Well, our time at COA comes to a close. Luckily, we got a couple extra days than we actually planned for. And I get to show Jose Luis a little bit of the island and yeah. school. So it's been really nice to have you here. Yeah, it was really amazing. You study in a beautiful, beautiful place. The people are really friendly. And the scenery, man, it's so beautiful. The towns and, you know, the new New England architecture, it's just so beautiful i'm really thankful that we got this time here so now it's time to take bobby to the mechanic so we've got a engine shutting down and a worn light issue and two new leaks and we have to be in canada by thursday night and it's monday evening <laughs> the good thing is that we are only about six and a half hours from, from montreal. montreal from here that's not including the border crossing uh, which i assume will take at least an hour do all the paperwork, especially with COVID. There's so many different things that you have to do and be prepared for. So hopefully everything goes good because we're kind of on a time crunch now and we'll see what happens. Never a dull moment on the road. Yep. All right, time to crank Bobby up. The porn line engine is still on. Oh, she went off and just came back on. <laughs> It is bittersweet leaving COA and Mount Desert Island once more. Coming here, seeing the school, seeing the island, sharing it all with Jose Luis, it does feel like a door is gently and quietly closing on an old chapter of my life. One I am profoundly grateful for. And now 
on to the very important order of business, this old bus of ours and her cranky engine. We really hope these guys can figure out exactly what is going on. Because time is running out, money is tight, and we have people waiting for us in Montreal, where we need to be in just a few short days. And this summer is our last shot to make it to Alaska. Hey guys, if you enjoy this video, be sure to give us a like. Subscribe to our channel. Send us a comment below. And for exclusive content and a behind the scenes view of the Art Be There Yet journey, join us on Patreon. See you over on Patreon.